This commercial-free presentation of sports figures is made possible by Microsoft. Where do you want to go today? The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a service of the cable television industry and your local cable company. You're not going to need this for the next 30 minutes. Jackie Maloof caught up with Derek Jeter before the game. So Derek, big game so with Derek, the Orioles game, tonight. So Derek, big game with the Orioles tonight. So Derek, big game with the Orioles tonight. Yeah, uh, they're a good team, but you know we'll just give it our best. So how are those ribs feeling? You doing okay? So how are those ribs feeling? You doing okay? Feeling? You doing okay? Well, the doctor had me take an extra week, but you know I'm feeling 100. percent I'm ready to go. Glad to hear it. Well, glad thanks so much for talking to us. Thanks so much for talking to us. Thanks so much for talking to us. And good luck. Thanks. What's up with that? What's up with that? What's up with that? Sports figures. Put your brain in the game. If you've ever been to a baseball game, you've probably noticed the delay between when you see the ball hit and when you hear the crack of the bat. But if you get great seats like these, there isn't any delay at all. Woo-hoo! Yeah, very nice. Very nice, yeah. Ticket, please. <sighs> okay, sport, let's go. Oh, boy. But whoever gets seats like this, Way up here, where most of us sit, the delay in the sound of the ball being hit can be pretty significant. Now here's something for you to think about. You went through all this trouble to come out to the stadium and see the game. You, you bought the tickets, you fought the trip, you even sat in a water bill. Meanwhile, someone who stayed home to watch the game on TV will actually hear the crack of the bat before you do. How can that be? How can a fan at home hear the hit before someone right here at the stadium? Hey, pal, there's a little trouble up here with the sound. That guy's pretty familiar with the crack of the bat. That's Derek Jeter. He plays shortstop on the New York Yankees. Derek's a former Rookie of the Year. He played on the Yanks' 1996 World Championship team and was just picked for a spot on the All-Star team. So, he's always got the best seat in the house. So, I bet you hear the crack of the bat pretty well from down here. Well, I guess it depends. It depends on who's hidden and if I'm paying attention. <laughs> I bet you never had to, uh, it way up in the stands, all the way up there in the upper tier. Well, it seems like not too long ago I was a fan, and we had tickets way up in the upper deck, and it was just now recently that I'm getting better seats. So why does it take the crack so long to travel up there? What has this to do with the time it takes for sound to reach you, especially if you're way up there, it takes a while. But I can see you hit the ball, so why isn't the image delayed too? Well, it has to do with the difference between uh, the way light travels and the way sound travels. That sounds possible. Light travels fast, really fast, really, really fast, about as fast as I'm moving now. Nothing can travel faster than light. You might think of light as the speed limit of our universe. Nothing can travel faster than light. Nothing, what a focus, and this guy proved it. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. That's really fast. That's over 30 round trips from New York to California in one second. It was first measured with precision by this guy. Albert Michelson was the first American to win a Nobel Prize. He used spinning mirrors to measure the speed of light. 186,000 miles per second. Because light travels so fast, whether I'm down here or up here, 
I'm seeing the ball get hit instantly. OK, so now we know light travels really, really fast. But how does it travel? Light travels in waves. If we were particles that light travel through, it will look something like this. Just like at a baseball game. That's called the transverse wave. The disturbance is perpendicular to the direction of the motion of the wave. OK, so the motion of the wave moves down the line this way, but the disturbance moves at a right angle to it like this. You can get a sense of how a light wave travels if you use the slinky. OK. Light waves move something like this. The wave moves down the slinky, but each part of the slinky only moves back and forth. OK, I get it. So the red part of the slinky only moves back and forth as the pulse passes through it, but it stays in the same place. Right. Only the wave moves down the slinky, just like the wave in the stand. So now we know how transverse waves work. And light travels in transverse waves. The disturbance can be in a lot of directions, like side to side, like this, or up or down, like this, or even at an angle, like this. As long as it stays perpendicular to the direction it's traveling. Right. Sound is slow. Sound only travels at 1,100 feet per second. That's only 750 miles per hour. It's no wonder that sound takes so long to get way up here. Sound is slow. Sound is made by vibrations. When you hit the ball, the impact between the ball and the bat create vibrations in the bat. Nice one. A guitar works the same way. The guitar makes sounds because the strings vibrate. Anything that makes sound makes it because there's vibrations. So when a ball hits a bat, it vibrates. Then what? The vibration creates compression waves in the air, like this. We can see what a compression wave looks like using a slinky, too. <laughs> Compresses the air in a wave just like that. When it comes back, and that's the echo. The wave is passed along like in a transverse wave. The red part of the slinky stays in the same place. The sound wave compresses your eardrum so you hear vibrations. OK, so we have compression waves for sound and transverse waves for light. Lots of things in our world move faster than sound. Fighter jets, <laughs> rifle bullets, even the tip of a whip when you crack it. If you crack it. You see, the crack of the whip is the tip breaking the sound barrier. A little sonic boom. One way to compare the speed of light and the speed of sound is thunder and lightning. We see the lightning practically the instant it happens. Uh, uh, and then count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Until you hear the thunder and divide by five, you can find out how far away the storm is because it takes sound about five seconds to travel a mile. Right now, I'm 400 feet away from Palm Plate, that little white thing way down here. Now, at 1,100 feet per second, the crack of the bat is going to take 36 hundredths of a second to reach me. That's more than a third of a second. That's a long time. In a lot of sports, the difference between winning and losing is way shorter. A third of a second is a long time. See what I mean? OK, so now I know why there's such a big delay here at the stadium. But why would someone at home hear the crack of the bat before you do? I mean, you're way, way farther away from the field. Doesn't it take a long time for the sound and picture to get to your TV? How does it get to your TV, anyway? This is where the picture you see at home starts. This is a television camera. So, Al, how many cameras are there like this around the stadium? On a typical Sunday night game, we use about 13 or 15 cameras. OK, and uh, how does this camera work? Well, basically, the image goes in through the lens. It turns it into an electronic signal. And there you see it in the viewfinder. It's... OK, then this electronic signal gets sent down into this wire. Right now, that picture is in this wire. It's wild, right?
And this is where the sound starts, at this microphone right back here. So, uh, Brian, how many microphones are there around the stadium? We have a total of 30 microphones around the stadium, including that. That's a grab we use it for the back grab. We're right here at the backstop, just behind home plate. Now, that microphone takes the sound waves, it bounces it off the dish and back, and then hits a microphone, and that turns the sound waves into an electronic signal. So the microphone takes the sound that we hear and converts it to an electronic signal that gets sent down this wire here. So, uh, where do all these wires go? They end up right here. This is a mobile television broadcasting unit. And inside, they put together the audio and the video the way you see it at home. Okay, so Mark, how does all this equipment work? We have 18 cameras, okay. which are spread all over the ballpark. In this These case, are the Shea pictures. Stadium. And then you have 14 video tape machines and video disc recorders. The tape machines um, record the replays that you see over the air and various other elements, animations and things like that. Okay. And you're sitting in the director's position, he chooses the cameras that, that go on the air, and I switch them through my video switcher here. Eventually we mix it all together and it goes out on the program monitor. Okay, so this screen here shows what you get on your TV at home, but the question is, how does it get from here to there? This thing here is a ground station for satellite transmission. It takes a sound picture of the game and converts it to TV radio waves that travel through air and space, just like light waves. So right now, in the area above the satellite, even though you can't see it, is the sound and picture of the game. It's being sent up to a satellite that's 22,000 miles right up there. Radio waves and light waves travel in straight lines. The Earth curves. So to get the signal around the curve of the Earth, we send it up to a satellite which receives it and can shoot it back down to another spot on the globe. In this case, your local cable TV provider. The radio waves from the satellite are collected in the dish and then reflected into a small receiver in the center. It turns those radio waves back into electronic information, which gets put back into a wire, a cable that finally ends up back in my house and plugs into the back of the television. And voila, I can watch a game thousands of miles away while it's happening. So that's how the sound and picture get to my house. But how could the sound get here before it got to someone way up in the stands at the stadium? Look at how far it had to travel. From the mic, through the wires, to the truck, up 22,000 miles to the satellite, down 22,000 miles from the satellite, and across town through the cable and into my TV. Now, could it really get here before it gets to the stands? So what's it like to work on TV every day? Well, you know, one of the things you get when you play in New York is that you are on TV every day, and uh, you got to be careful what you do and really? what you say. You can get yourself in trouble. Ah, so do you get nervous about it and go home and check yourself out and watch what you did? Not really. I don't really get nervous, but uh, I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't go home and see how we did, because, you know, you always get the highlights, so you check out, check it out and see how you're doing. Having a little pizza, a little hog and does, watching what happens. Oh, yeah, most definitely. So what happens if you had a really bad hair day? Is that... When you play baseball, <laughs> you have this hat. And you can just throw it on any time. And you're so you always looking about fine. Your hair. There you go. You don't have to worry about your hair. OK, here's the deal. It's going to take the crack of the bat 36 hundredths of a second to reach me way up here. The microphone that picks up the crack of the bat is right down there, only about 30 feet away from home plate. The sound is going to get there in practically no time. 30 feet at 1,100 feet per second is only 3 one hundredths of a second. The microphone converts the sound energy into electronic energy, and that's the secret. Electricity travels at roughly the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. That means it gets to the truck almost instantly. And here, to the ground station. Now, remember, the signal's now been converted to TV radio waves, and those waves also travel at the speed of light. So the 22,000 miles up to the satellite only takes 12 one hundredths of a second. And for the satellite to send the signal back down to Earth only takes 12 one hundredths of a second. At your local cable company, it gets put back into wires, but the signal is still traveling at the speed of light. So let's say it has to go 20 miles to your house. 20 miles at 186,000 miles per second 
is one one hundred thousandths of a second. Add it all up and you get 28 hundredths of a second compared to 36 hundredths of a second at the top of the stadium. That's eight one hundredths of a second sooner. Plus you get to see and hear the hit at the same time because the picture and sound travel together. Come on, come on, let's hear it already. It's about time. This is me live at Yankee Stadium. And this is me this live, is on, a live on a TV set 3,000 miles, miles away in Los, in Los Angeles. Angeles. The delay you hear is how long it takes my image and sound to travel up and down to the satellite and go 3,000 miles. Thanks a lot, Derek. No problem, problem. <laughs> so that's it. We'd like to thank Derek Jeter, our students, Eric, Suzanne, Kelly, Robin, Todd, and Jake. For helping us out today on ESPN Sports Figures, The Sounds of Summer. <sighs> you can have this back now. Thanks for watching. Go. It's over. We'd like to thank all the sports figures who participated in today's show free of charge. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. To order free teacher's curriculum, call ESPN at 860-585-2000 or access it on the web at espnnet.sportszone.com. Do you or your class have a question you'd like to see explored on sports figures? Drop us a note at Sports Figures, ESPN Plaza, Bristol, Connecticut, or the email address on your screen. ESPN Sports Figures, put your brain in the game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a service of the cable television industry and your local cable company.